Woodlawn. I can only imagine, I still believe, American Underdog. It's all been leading to this. So, John, so great for you to join me. Uh, you've got some great, exciting things in the works. Uh, you know, we're reading all about it on the Internet. Every Everybody's talking about it. Uh, I want to know more about it. You know, our audience is really interested. And so uh, can you kind of like introduce it to us? Yeah, it's called uh, The Wonder Project. And the dream, uh, uh, which started a while ago, was that um, I'm just very inspired by how many there's four or five studios this year that are celebrating a hundred years, you know, of telling stories. And it's been so wonderful to be a part of some singular uh, uh, successes in the space. I'm so grateful and to work alongside, uh, you know, my brother and others. And, but you just dream of, of the idea of, could we have a studio of our own? If we could get enough money together that could, could give opportunity to the other creatives in the space. And if, and really set them free in a whole new way, like give them, you know, resources and and freedom to reach the audience that they've that they've not had. And can we sort of declare independence um, in this industry, and and create a, a a destination for the talent in the space to to tell their stories and and um, and, and make their films? And I just think that uh, that that I know my sometimes the best products to make are the ones that you need in, in your own household and. Uh, and I think that there's a need here, you know, uh, for a brand and a place where, where this stuff can happen and where we can have a level of, of independence and autonomy that typically only the studios provide. But the, the goal has just been to, to um, set the other creatives in the space free and have a studio of our own. And as you know, these things are very expensive and you need a great team. And so it's a very, very uh, 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 difficult road to this point, but it's so cool to see, um, you know, the audience prove yet you just over and over again you know what what kind of demand there is you know and uh, that's made this possible so I, I feel like this is a great leap forward and uh and the dream of having you know an independent studio uh, of our own that could really empower a lot of people uh has been long held and it's amazing to see it um just beginning to come into fruition so are you thinking, um, you know, or, older audience films or a range like animation as well for families or or what's the thought on that? I know what I need. What I need is, you know, the dream is a values based brand and ecosystem that is absolutely unafraid of Christianity and the American dream. Um, and that tells stories. We talk about stories that restore faith in things worth believing in, you know, um, uh, and stories that are intentionally designed, uh, to pull the family back together again. You know, I remember at the premiere of Jesus revolution, Beth and I were watching it. Kate, our daughter was there and my parents were there. So you had three generations and I know how important that is to movie guide as well. I think what's missing is content that pulls us together, uh, in multiple generations of a family. And so that's what we're co-family viewing, I guess, is the term for it. That's what we, you know, what can I watch with my teenage daughter or my, or my, you know, 13 year old son, um, or even our two younger boys that, that is fiercely entertaining, um, that's done with the highest standards of quality, but that really allows us to have conversations as a family that are, you know, that are important and uh, and that really restore faith. I think a lot of entertainment right now is chipping away at belief, you know, certainly at Christianity. That's one thing, but also, at a, you know, chipping away at belief in this country, you know, or other things that are absolutely worth it, you know, uh, family, entrepreneurism. And so I think that this is an opportunity to do what we've done, but also a lot more. Um, underneath a banner that would empower a lot of people. And uh, and so we're, we're looking, yes, at, at certainly um, uh, at, at kids' content and content for adults. But the main thing that we're passionate about is content for the entire family. Yeah, I love that. Um, and kind of talk about your, you know, you've got a great uh, team there with Kelly, who's coming on, on board. Can you talk a little bit about her background and um, what excited her about coming Coming it's on so project. cool. I think for anyone listening, there's a moment in time in our industry. Um, I think Christianity and values are just making their comeback. And Kelly launched Netflix in, um, 
uh, you know, substantively in its first 50 countries internationally and, you know, was worked at Netflix very early, had hundreds of people reporting to her at YouTube <clears throat> after that. And uh, she's from Texas. Uh, she's a believer, you know, she's a person of values. And uh, and she finally had just sort of had enough, you know, and and said, you know, I, I certainly don't want to speak for her. But basically, the idea is, is I have to I have to align my my career with with a calling that's based off my values and my faith. And, and I think that there's a lot of executives in the entertainment industry that are just Titans. Uh, and Kelly is a great example of that, that for a long time, they were content to just sort of like um, be the person with their finger in the dam, you know, sort of, sort of keeping at bay some of the, some of the more damaging trends in the industry. But I think there's just been sort of shifts in content in the industry where where it's like enough is enough i have to align my values with my career and um and and so she came aboard as ceo she's extraordinary it's been a great you know my my vision is to spend 80 percent of my time creating the, the the films and tv shows and partnering with other creators and really working on the product and uh and a, a studio is hard to run and it's very large and so to have a great you know we, we ask the question a lot what can we do together that none of us can do alone and so it's so cool to see uh, Kelly and then others, uh, just executives that have built many of the services and studios that that exist today, um, really want to be a part of something that they can believe fully in and watch with their family. Yeah. And a lot of times when you have families, um, you know, I heard that Kelly has younger children. And so, you know, it does make you, you know, your life change radically and you're seeing things in a different way, right? Because you're seeing it through your kids. Um, and I'm sure that's a lot of your motives are, you know, seeing things through your kids and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, how, how we view the world now is very different than when we were. Isn't it? Yeah. It's almost like, it's almost like when you become a camp counselor for the first time and you just basically want to apologize to all the camp counselors you had for all <laughs> the things you did as a camper, you know, uh, I think, I think uh, I know how I feel as a dad. I often say, you know, we're the first generation, if you think about it, of parents. I was talking to uh, Beth the other day, and, we, you know, the iPad was introduced when Kate was two. Um, you know, she's now 15. God help me. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> you know, and and, uh, and so we're, we really are the first generation that are dealing with this sudden prolification of technology and with streaming at scale. And it's not like you just have cable television. You have a lot of services bombarding your home with content. Uh, and then also what's going on in the theaters. And what, what it begins to feel like is, you know, a screen used to be a place that pulled your family together. You know, if you think about I Love Lucy or Carol Burnett or Andy Griffith, or, you know, way back in the history of, of, of screens, both large and small, they were sort of designed to pull us together in a common experience um, that typically was infused with our values. And now it's almost like the screen rips our families apart. And, uh, and you know, I think, you know, the stats on isolation and loneliness and anxiety, you know, they're, they're all going so high. And I think a lot of the content, while impeccably well made over the last 15 years, really has a, has a dearth of belief. It's, it's hard to know what to believe in when you watch some of these shows or movies. And so we talk about content, we talk about just flooding the world with hope and content that is infused with things worth believing in. Um, of course, I think Christianity is 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 one of those primary and profound things. And the, the Bible, the, truly the greatest stories ever told, and more of them should be told, and God willing, we'll do that. Um, but also, you know, our grandfather received the Medal of Honor. And so just the story of America and and the story of heroes and patriots and, and just an it's not a perfect country, but it is one worth believing in. And uh, and so I think it, it's that type of content and content that hopefully you leave the experience, um, you know, with 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 belief and inspiration and things that are truly worth it. And I think his movie guide has has demonstrated through data you know uh, for many many years you know the, these films and tv shows that are designed for the whole family they just do better you know it's it's interesting how studios don't listen as much as they should but uh but our hope is to create a place where that can happen consistently and, and the dream is if we build it right 
Um, sometimes when something doesn't exist, you just got to say, well, you know, why not us and why not now? And I just, the crazy idea is if some of these studios are celebrating a hundred years, I mean, can you imagine if we got a company right that could last even half as long as some of these other studios, um, what a profound impact that would make to, to uh, our families and to the world. So that's, that's the moonshot and, uh, and we're going for it. But ultimately I just love to say thank you to the audience. I mean, you know, um, I, I was joking around the other day. I think, I think a lot of the sort of the Hollywood press, they're going to have to like not be allowed to use the word shocked anymore. I'm grateful for it, but these films keep coming. It's like, Oh, f the faith audience shocks Hollywood shocks Hollywood. At some point it's like, we're here to stay and we're large. It's the largest affinity group in the world. And, uh, and so the audience has spoken so clearly and so loudly. I remember when we did Jesus Revolution, you know, I bought that magazine uh, on eBay, 50 year old magazine, carried it around for eight years um, while making the other films, uh, wanting to get that movie made. It was like a passion project. And so one of the, the, the things that we said is, wouldn't it be cool if Jesus was back on the cover of time, you know, and it wasn't time, but it was Newsweek and it was this portrait of Jesus with a film clapper. And it said, you know, Jesus invades Hollywood. And it was the story of the chosen mm -hmm. of Jesus revolution of sound of freedom. It was just, it's been a year of, uh, of wins that have allowed us to really take a, a great leap forward. So, um, you know, we've always said that your movie ticket is your vote and, um, and there's been so many votes cast that we've been able to to pull together some really significant resources in the deal we just announced. Uh, I can't wait to to talk about what's coming, and uh, and I just think it allows us to to instead of building everyone else's home in terms of studios, we're gonna we're gonna band together and build our own and hopefully build it to last and serve the audience in a much more profound way um, with a level of of consistency and resources and scale that that I I, I can't really believe um exists you know and so i'm grateful to be any part of it uh let alone the founder of it and and uh and i can't wait till till we can start talking about the things that we're working on and who we're working with and and uh i just think that um you know there was a time when the biblical epic was the marvel movie of hollywood and and i just think that uh that we can we can reclaim our voice in this industry together uh and that's that's what's happening in a profound way. Movie Guide's always been a huge part of that, and your family has been wonderful uh, friends and allies, and and uh, and it's a great work, and I'm grateful for it. Seems the movement's everywhere. It's spreading like wildfire. If you enjoy videos that follow your values like ours and you want to help us continue, uh, go to movieguide.org slash donate because we're actually a nonprofit. You may not know that, but we're working in Hollywood every day to help families have more choices that follows their values. And also subscribe right now.